What movie things are generally accepted as normal, but are totally unrealistic in real life? Finding a parking spot in front of the building you're going into. Oh, and always eating at the same table. When someone hides from bullets behind penetrable objects, like tables or a refrigerator door. Didn't Indiana Jones survive a nuclear blast in a fridge? He, along with Short Round and the lady also jumped out of a plane on an inflatable raft and then rode it down a snowy mountain, then fell off a cliff in it and landed in the water and went down some rapids and everyone was fine. Ah yes, I remember that. Best thing about it is that he was in the range where everything that can possibly start to burn will meaning the temperature would be round about 540k degree f to 300 times hotter than the temperature bodies are cremated it in other words everything would have been vaporized the fridge cools them down though and it was lined with lead lead is the pinnacle of anti-radiation technology the wooden table is the one that always gets me sure maybe it will stop one or two bullets if you're lucky but there's always 1,000 bullets flying around while the characters are having a conversation under the safe, sound-resistant guard of an old dining room table. People opening their front door three seconds after an unexpected knock, like they're just constantly standing behind the door, just in case. Well, they're NPCs. They have nothing better to do. They don't actually exist until you knock, then they spawn by the door quick turn on the news quote tv is already tuned into the news channel and it's at the beginning of the broadcast that can barf up 100 percent of the information needed to drive the story arrested development is a good spoof of this women in action movies who drastically cut their own hair to change their appearance always end up with a fabulous style yes always in a like truck stop bathroom with gas station hair dye yet they look amazing when someone gets knocked out and stays unconscious until the plot requires them to wake up again archer is good about this generally if someone is knocked unconscious they're only out for 30 seconds a minute or so on one occasion archer was out for about 30 minutes and after he relays that to the team they all recoil in horror and tell him that he could have serious brain damage. Uh how long was I out? Like two minutes. That's super bad for you. You should probably go to the hospital. I love how Archer has tinnitus and concussions but still has all the other action movie tropes. Unless it's a movie drama dealing with social issues. In particular poverty. Everyone has such fucking nice flats college dropout with part-time barista job? Why yes, the spacious loft with a view over Manhattan's skyline is just down my alley. And every window in Paris overlooks the Eiffel Tower. How does that happen? It's a form of shorthand. Not every place in Paris has a view of the tower. But it's the filmmakers telling the audience, this is in Paris. Or more commonly, this story involved romance somehow. Another amazing example of shorthand is in Disney's Hercules. He gets on his knees in the Temple of Zeus to commune with high Monsieur, typically Greek temple goers. Would have slaughtered an animal on an altar or some shit. But American audiences would have a problem with that, having them pray like a Christian shows. People who don't know any better that Hercules is engaged in piety. Eiffel Tower is an SCP entity confirmed. Edit or the work of an enemy stand. I'm legit pissed with myself that I didn't think of it as a JoJo reference initially. The punch sound. In my first fight, I made the punching sound to make it a more lively experience. Three tenths. Got my ass kicked. If you had a sword, you'd have needed to make that metal on metal sound when you took it out of a leather sheath. Sheing g g g g. Oh just general beatings that don't kill you and you're fine a few scenes later. The breakfast thing. Having a big amazing breakfast laid out on a school workday. And then everyone rushes off after eating one bite of toast. This. All that time and energy to make all that fantastic looking food then no one eating it. Now it needs to be put away and saved for later. 
why, just why, and how it's always daylight when people are waking up for school. 80% of the year it's dark for me when I wake up. When a character is misunderstood by another character and doesn't even try explain themselves. After being cut off by the other person. For example, say Betty was in an awkward situation with Billy where it looked like Betty was cheating on Johnny with Billy but it was just a big huge innocent mix-up. Johnny catches them and Betty tries to explain but Johnny cuts her off. Says we are done don't talk to me ever again. And that's the end of it. Betty just gives up trying to explain. Like I know damn well in real life if Betty wasn't cheating on Johnny. If it was a big confusing mix-up. That conversation would not be over. Misunderstandings for comedy equals fine. Good. Ha ha ha. Misunderstandings for drama equals tedious and frustrating beyond belief. On a similar note. How families who move into haunted houses decide to keep their worries to themselves or just not believe each other. You saw a tall creepy man in your room last night and you don't want to tell anyone? Even your younger sibling who definitely voiced seeing a weird shadow two nights ago. Really? The best worst part about that was the first Insidious movie. I've not seen the others. Weird stuff happens in the family's new home. Families get the heck out. Weird stuff happens again in new, new home. Parents find out their kid is haunted. Huge lapses in time or long distances traveled but the characters are still at the same spot in conversation. Eight hours of travel and the character's hair and outfit is still perfect. If you keep persisting, you get the girl of your dreams and totally not a restraining order. Thanks for the award, stranger. I am being romantic grand, ridiculous gestures to impart a minor piece of information. Like, how did you know the deceased? Follow me, it's better if I show you. Backslash. Drive three hours into the wilderness. Six hours hiking up a mountain. Now sitting in the darkness around a campfire. You see, dot she was my sister. And she really loved camping here. I see. On to the next question. Being a criminal in movie reality would be so easy until you hurt the family of Jack Hardasser. Someone with a similar name and make the case personal. Two or three police officers respond to every single call. And if you are lucky one of them might be the comic relief character. Greater than Jack Hardass I dribbled some coffee out of my mouth. Everyone is young. Especially doctors, professors, specialists, they all seem to be the top of their field with years of experience and they are all like 22 and hot. Everyone is young except high school students who are in their 20s. I hate the 20 to 30 year old high school student thing so much. Only ones who might be appropriately aged. The nerds. To make sure they are smaller and scrawnier than everyone else. My guess is that they only do this because it could get really uncomfortable and pretty illegal if it goes into the sex lives of high school aged characters. People on low incomes, e.g. students, living in expensive homes. I'm not necessarily talking about mansions, more like a large apartment in a big expensive city with no roommates. Suppose studio apartment that is literally bigger than my local supermarket. A bright-eyed 22-year-old moving into the Big Apple and getting a one-bedroom apartment while hunting for their dream job, while eating at pizza places and drinking lattes. I've done it. I finally made it to New York City. Excuse me sir, do you know where a young prostitute can get her start in this town? Quote, no, but I do know an extremely wealthy well-known lawyer, fashion icon looking for an assistant with no experience that pays six figures in. You're guaranteed a position and advancement. Quote, they sometimes just stop conversations on the most random spots, or hang up. Yeah, no goodbyes like, yep, will do, hangs up, hello, you there. Hello, you wanna go on a date with me? Sure, see you there. Um, time, place. Okay, I'll pick you up at eight. Um, we just met for the first time at the bookstore 20 minutes ago and you already know where I live. I'm guessing you've never watched you. Everyone is ridiculously good looking. 
It's sort of funny when they need to make one girl in particular super beautiful so the main guy can fall in love with her instantly. She'll be a supermodel walking into a room of supermodels. They'll throw a bunch of close-ups and glowy filters on to tell you she's supposed to be extra pretty. But the fact that everyone in the room is equally pretty makes her just look average. Or a romantic comedy in which we're all supposed to pretend the woman is far out of his league. Just because everyone said so. But the actor himself is a fucking catch. Bonus points if the male character behaves or does things to win her over that IRL would be creepy. And label him a stalker. Winning over a girl by making over the top. Grand gestures. Especially when she has already rejected you in the past. Shattering bottles easily over someone's head. Don't attempt it unless you want to possibly go to prison for murder. In action sequences in general. Taking an enormous amount of injury and then getting up with a few attractively placed bruises in. Cuts. In particular. The trope of the bad guy who more or less needs to be thrown into a jet turbine to be destroyed. Or he'll somehow get back up again. Characters who always have something witty to say and are never at a loss for words. I knew a guy who got bottled. Didn't go to parties for years after that. Man that shit hurts. A friend of mine A-C-C-I-D-D-N-T-A-L-L-Y. So not even aiming or full force. Hit me on the head with a bottle while dancing and I dropped. Someone doing it maliciously would be damn serious. I wonder how many people are in prison for murder, manslaughter thinking a bottle over the head won't do much damage. Some suppressors on guns make bullets being stopped by car doors. Cars exploding when shot. Literally 95% of anything gun related. Edit. Never had a comment go over 4 or 5 upvotes at any given time. That's one of my favorite things in Last Action Hero. When they're inside the movie. Arnold will shoot a car and it'll explode. Then later when they go into the real world, he will shoot a car and nothing happens. So he says the cars are bulletproof. Quote. He also then gets surprised by his hand hurting after punching through a car window. Showing up for a meeting over dinner or drinks. Having said meeting in one to two minutes and just leaving. It bugs me so much that so many shows and movies do this. You could easily just cut the scene and the viewer could just imagine that they finished dinner together or had their drinks. But nope. People will literally order a drink. Take a sip and just walk away. When in real life have you ever seen that? That particular era of horror movies where cell phones are becoming so popular they have to show up, explain why they were useless left in the car. Broken. Lost when cell phones became ubiquitous. They let reality take over, didn't check the messages. Out of service area. Breaking up. It's fun watching horror movies from each decade. Every five years. Really. To see this trope. When people talk perfectly. Without any pauses mid-sentence or making any uh or hum sounds. Guns making a lot of random clicking noises as soon as they point it at someone. Describing common knowledge in a different setting. Luke should know all about Mos Eisley. It's the biggest town near his house. I know. I've lived here literally my entire life. I was just making conversation. You don't have to be a dig Luke. I mean, I've even come here with my uncle dozens of times to buy replacement parts. Actually I know some guys. There's Pitt. Hey Pitt. Waves hand he's a really nice guy. His son just got a scholarship from the Empire. My favorite is from an episode of House in which a patient's friend explains nominal aphasia to a neurologist. Grenades kill by launching shrapnel but also by the concussive force it expends. There's no big explosion, it's like a puff of smoke filled with angry metal bees shooting out everywhere. Also when someone outruns the fire from the blast they're okay. Never mind that they should at least be looking like they just got their ass beat from the concussive force. Weird nobody mentioned that in movies everybody always looks at each other while driving. And they move the damn driving wheel way too much while driving straight forward. Pisses me off. Well, 
Moving the driving wheel thing comes from older cars with loose steering boxes. It makes no sense in modern movies. But in old movies, it's more accurate. Sometimes slightly exaggerated. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day.